Our next presenter, this is Brainpool Tech from Singapore. Uh, they provide a platform that integrates high resolution digital twins of large spaces, uh, real time tracking and environmental sensors to prepare, predict and respond to natural disasters. Sounds great, here we go. My name is Colin Owens. I'm the co-founder of Brainpool Tech, and we are a technology integration company that focuses on digitizing large spaces. So a major challenge for cities is to create a sustainable and resilient place for people to live. And we're proud to be headquartered in Singapore, which is in the top five smart cities in the world. One of the greatest challenges facing humanity right now is the increase in climate change as a global threat to cities. And in the past two years, we've seen an increase in weather severity and frequency, as well as, of course, the most costly pandemic in 100 years. Our solution for our clients is a software ecosystem to enable fast and effective decision making. And what we do is we integrate high, res high precision geolocated maps through uh, drones and satellite imagery, environmental sensors, and real-time tracking and integration on a one software platform embedded with artificial intelligence. We focus on disaster management, which is a large market, and leverage on the drone industry, which is a fast-growing market. Our go-to market strategy is through Japan because it has high exposure to natural disasters, number one. Number two, it has a government that focuses its priority on uh, seeking solutions for natural disasters and a stable economy whereby uh, large infrastructure for these solutions is actually feasible. <clears throat> Our product is made up of a desktop platform and a mobile application. The desktop platform acts as a control station um, where uh, you have all of the necessary maps from topographic um, with embedded data analysis, such as risk assessment for floods, landslide, drought, um, as well as geofenced areas uh, that can then be seen by the mobile application user um, to know, uh, for example, uh, where they need to go in case of an emergency and also the fastest way to go. So <clears throat> this is where we start. Our competition, um, for example, is providing emergency response, but not a full stack software integration and not end to end services where we provide a uh, drone service to map the area. Then we load that map onto our software, provide the analysis from that, uh, from that data, and then integrate it with real time data through artificial intelligence. And um, 2021, we plan to file our first AI patent application. In 2022, start outsourcing our drone services and focusing solely on software so that we can enter the Chinese and U.S. markets. And as we gain traction and new data, uh, second and third layer data, we aim to build a data marketplace. We have an international team with over 40 years of business experience, over 20 years of big data experience, and over 10 years of software development experience. In the past two years, uh, we incorporated in 2019. We were the official provider for the mobile application of the SMBC Singapore Open, an international golf tournament. We're also a spin-off of National University of Singapore. And in 2020, we won three proof of concept projects, uh, two in Japan, uh, Kobe and Ukoma, focusing on landslide and uh, flooding, and then one in Australia focusing on drought management. In 2021, we aim to release our platform to customers, complete our artificial intelligence development, and create advanced modules uh, for the software. We're seeking $600,000 of add-on investment um, in our seed round, which we plan to close in a few months. Um, and we also seek new multinational companies to grow our um, client base and, um, and 
expand to other verticals uh, that surround the disaster management vertical. You can also download our official SMBC Singapore Open app um, on the App Store or Google Play. Thank you for your time. And please feel free to ask any questions or visit our website at brainpooltech.com. All right, thank you very much, Cullen. Now it's time for our Q&A. Anyone have any questions? Okay, Joshua, go for it. Uh, thanks very much, Colin, for the great presentation. Um, I'm particularly interested in your Japan story and plans. Um, I noticed you have ABC Dream Ventures, uh, who are great friends of ours too, um, and and some other angel investors, and you've done some POCs. Um, outside of that, is there any customer traction at this stage? And is your um, is your service localized? For Jap is it and ready for the for the customers here? Basically, is my question. Um, sure, thanks. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, great. Okay, great. Um, just I'll, I'll just do a kind of background. We industry and in mapping golf courses and use that as a beachhead market uh, where we built this uh, mobile application. The mobile application serves as um, kind of the front end of the of the whole software ecosystem. And so um, we do have traction in that market, but as we uh, gain investment and turn kind of to a pivot in this direction, um, we're building uh, the larger software platform, the back end and the front end to attach to the, the uh, mobile application. And so from a natural disaster um, and um, prediction uh, standpoint, we're, we're working hard on these three proof of concepts. And with the resources we have now, that's, that's everything we can do. But they're basically flooding, um, looking at landslide and and then also drought. So we'll we'll really focus hard right now on flooding as much as possible. Thank you. Great. Do we have any other questions, Philip or Alan? Not for right now. Okay. Thank you very much to Cullen, and we're going to move on to our next presenter. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next presenter is Cross Group Limited from Singapore. Uh, they valorize food waste and loss into beverages for the food service and retail partners. Surplus ingredients like bread and fruit peels are reincarnated into craft beers, etc. That sounds pretty cool. Today, they join us from Japan. So let's take a look. Here we go. Do you know how big our food waste problem really is? Millions of tons and anywhere between 20 to 45% of food in airlines, food service, retail and hotels are wasted yearly. Why the insane numbers? The reality is food waste is really hard to manage. Furthermore, from 2024 onwards, new regulations from NEA will require businesses that generate a lot of waste to treat it. This is where CRUST comes in to solve the prevalence of food waste and provide value back to businesses in food service and retail. My name is Trevin Singh and I'm the founder and CEO of Cross Group. Cross Group is a Singapore-based food tech startup that valorizes food loss into unique product lines for corporate partners in FMB and hotels. We create fun products like Cross beers and crop carbonated drinks from food loss. Since entering the market, we have saved 400 kg of food loss to produce about 6,500 liter of beer reducing 9,000 kg of carbon emission. So just imagine what we could do once we expand our capacity and operations. So in our first month, um, MBS became our customer and within six months, we've partnered with Fair Price Finals, Red Mart, Tiong Bahru Bakery, Edible Garden City and more. Currently, we are working closely with Salad Stop, Dole, CP Group, Kellogg's and Better Barista on proof of concepts. So how do we bring value to our corporate partners? Retailers, FMB chains, and hotels produce surplus food that is costly to use, to lose, sorry, and even more costly to dispose of. We provide value by being their R&D partner, giving their food loss a new lease of life, and delivering value back. By partnering with us, they save cost, all while gaining a unique co-branded product, potential revenue of $8 to $12 per bottle, and a sustainable initiative with a story to tell. 
end, we have a bis uh, very win-win business model. Through our sustainable unique label, um, the SUL model, we act as the R&D platform to provide co-branded products for corporate partners. Our SUL model involves a one to two years contract with revenues of $30,000 to $200,000 per year per customer to take on logistics and R&D and product development. For each contract, we charge a setup fee of between five to $10,000 per year, an R&D fee of $3,000 per exclusive recipe, and on top of that, on an MOQ price per bottle as well. So at Cross Group, we have big plans to expand into new markets. We take a localized approach to each market instead of exporting products. We are already setting up Cross Japan in November this year and are working with Dole, Kellogg, CP Group to launch in Thailand. We are also forming a joint venture with a company in Korea, right? Um, you know, to launch Cross Korea next year as well. So each new market we enter will operate via a franchise model where Cross Group provides the R&D platform, branding and consulting. We set up a local entity with local partners, you know, charging them a franchise fee of between fifty to $200,000 and on top of that, an annual royalty of 5%. The Cross Group core team is diverse um, and has a vast range of experiences and background. We are all extremely passionate about creating a more sustainable and unique um, circular economy. On top of that, we are currently raising uh, our pre-seed round of $500,000 to expand our team, increase R&D capabilities and launch in new markets. We have already raised half this amount and welcome you to join us on our mission to reduce global food loss by 1% by 2030. Thank you and happy to take any questions. All right, Travin, thank you very much. It's now time for our question and answer. Alan, you've already got your hand up, I believe. Go ahead. Yep. Um, very interesting idea to reuse food waste in creation of new food products to get different flavor profiles, but I'm having a hard time understanding how um, bread that's over its shelf life be, is incorporated into beer, how that impacts the cost of the beer production and how it impacts the flavor profile versus traditional methods. What are you, what are you replacing? How does incorporating bread in beer impact the economics and flavor of the product? Uh, Jim, it looks like your Thank mic you is me. off. Sorry. Am I good? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Okay, go ahead. Got it. What we're doing is we're taking food loss, and these are materials that are still well within the expiration date. So, for example, in Japan, the brown part of the bread is not used at all. That's, okay, where, yeah. we, that's where we take the ingredients from big bread companies in Japan, they're throwing about two or three tons a day, and we're taking about 100 kilos of that, depending on capacity, our production capacity. And so in terms of flavor, we spend about six to eight months tweaking the flavor, the temperature, the pH, the process, formulation, to make sure that our craft beer coming out of bread and rice uh, is tasty uh, for our customers. So our first product will be available in Japan first week of March. I look forward to tasting it. <laughs> All right, Joshua or Philip, do you have any questions? Okay, Philip, go ahead. Um, thank you for your presentation. It does seem like a, a very uh, custom approach, uh, localized approach, R&D. Um, how do you make this business scale if you're white labeling to most of your customers and creating a new product, um, but how do you scale that as a business? So it's pretty much plug and play model. Yeah, you know, what we do is uh, is we we sort of take our license technology to different markets. We look for local manufacturers, local surplus ingredients, and you know using our technology for production and for local consumption. So we try to avoid at all costs any sort of carbon footprint on logistics, transportation. So everything is locally produced and locally consumed. And that's the way we scale very quickly. Plug and play, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> great, uh, great word choice, thank you. All right, I, I think that uh, is enough for our time. We're right at about three minutes, so thank you very much, Jim. 
and thank you to our judges. Okay, we're going to move on to our next startup. This is Ara Air from Israel. Uh, they offer an all-in-one indoor and outdoor air purification and quality intelligence system that filters and disinfects indoor air while monitoring its quality all in real time. So let's roll the video. Here we go. Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Oren. I'm the business development director of Orair. We at Orair developed the world's smartest air management platform. The company was founded three years ago after a significant research we've done with two leading universities here in Israel, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and the Technion University here in Haifa. Nowadays, when we're talking about global public emergency, we're understanding that it was before the corona pandemic, but the corona pandemic really educated the market regarding air quality awareness worldwide. OIR developed a data-driven air quality platform based on user behavior algorithm. It operates and function for four different steps. The first step is detection. We are detecting indoor and outdoor air quality parameters, smoke, CO2, voltarogenic compounds, particle meters, temperature, humidity, are just one of the parameters that we're detecting. The reason for the detection is because before the device will operate and function, we want to understand what is the origin of the problem. After we're getting a better, a better understanding of the origin of the problem, we are getting to the second phase, which is the business platform that we're providing. So every business customer receiving a platform, which over there you can integrate many devices inside one exact platform. If it's a hotel room or even a school manager, they basically can have integration of many devices inside the platform and see real time 24 seven, the indoor and outdoor quality parameters in each room they have implemented the device inside. The third part is our unique filtration and disinfection method. We are using here several patents that we have. We have the ray filter, which is our own patent, consists three different layers, HEPA, that relevant to particles up to 0.3 microns, carbon layer that absorbs gases and bad smells that caused by fungus and molds, and copper compound. The copper compound makes sure that the bacteria and viruses that got stuck on our filter after a couple of time are dead and neutralized, and basically that the filter is doing its job. In addition to that, we have UVC LED, four UVC light that by the exposure kill the bacteria and viruses inside the filter itself, and we have a sterilizer. Sterilizer is providing the proactive solution of disinfection. It's a biopolar ionization spreading to the air plus and minus ions by that disinfecting bacteria, viruses, fungus, and molds. That way, we're providing a holistic solution of filtration, sucking up polluted air inside, but also disinfecting and regenerating ions and basically killing bacteria and viruses inside the air. Well, working nowadays with many different institutions, the EPA in the US market, Shiba Medical Center here in Israel, and even the Ministry of Defense in Spain. I assume that all of us are very worried and want to understand regarding the corona pandemic, what exactly OIR have done regarding this matter. So we started a very comprehensive project with Chiba Medical Center in August 2019. At the moment the corona pandemic started in February 2020, we shifted ourselves to receive an approval just of disinfecting the corona uh, virus specifically. We received an amazing result of disinfecting the coronavirus by 99.99%. The fourth part of our device is the fact that our device is an IoT device. While using Open API, we can integrate with building management system and we can discuss with other IoT devices. Also, what we're providing over here is actual recommendations and insights. So not everyone understands what high CO2 levels or high VOC levels stands for. We're translating those parameters to actual recommendations 
such as possibility to viruses in the air, possibility to someone who's smoking in their room, if it's a hotel room, for example, or even to provide a recommendation to open a window and get fresh air from outside. Our device is a plug and play device, meaning that you just attach it to a water receiving, you can connect it by electricity and pair it by Wi Fi. It will do 55 square meters and 2.5 air exchanges per hour. As you can understand, we are suitable everywhere. The indoor environment awareness increased enormously worldwide. Nowadays, we are working with more than 50 countries worldwide in many different segments. We have hotels, education institutions, hospitals, transportation companies, and so on. As you can see over here, we are implemented in schools, universities, and kindergarten worldwide. We installed our seven hotels as well, whether it's in the lobby or even in the rooms. We installed our seven commercial buildings, hospitals, and many different segments. Before I will finish, I would like to discuss a bit about the Japanese market and what we're doing over there. So nowadays, we have a very comprehensive collaboration with JTEC Company, with associated with SMBC Trust Bank. We basically started to collaborate in the Japanese market, penetrated already in variety of collaborations with the Karaoke Association in Japan, with JTB, the tourism company, and many different clients and companies all over the Japanese market. We are very looking forward to work in the Japanese market and to penetrate it by all means. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. It was a real pleasure to meet you. Jikan ga atte itadaite, arigato gozaimasu. Kore kara yoroshiko onegaishimasu. All right, Oren from Ara Air, thank you very much. Okay, Alan, take it away. Yeah, uh, so my question is, what's the price point for the wall device and what's your current manufacturing capacity? And I ask because I know of a Japanese spin-out from Sharp that has a, a plasma ion device with similar performance characteristics in terms of bacteria reduction and is in the market uh, selling similar devices already. And so I'm wondering how the com competition may play out in, uh, in Japan. Yeah, thank you for the question. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I would say several things. First of all, regarding the price point. So because our uh, Japanese company that we're collaborating with uh, provide the devices over there, as far as I know, it's 200,000 yen and it would change accordingly to the companies they are collaborating with. But when it comes to commercial and price wise, it will be much more better to speak with them. Regarding the capacity of production, nowadays we are producing the devices in two locations, the US market and um, here in Israel, 15,000 devices per month. This is currently our capacity and can, we can increase accordingly to the demand. We're also thinking very seriously on OEM just in Japan. I'm not objective, but I really want us to open over there a market, uh, sorry, offices and manufacturing as well. Regarding the value proposition that you just mentioned, so we have many different air purifiers nowadays in the market. It's a one billion, it's a, a, a billions of dollars um, market. And I would say that our value proposition is the fact that we're giving and providing the ability to see OL quality. So this is our main value proposition. The fact that you're not just breathing great air, but we can integrate with being management system to provide an actual platform and see 24 seven your oil quality in each business that integrated our devices inside. All right, thank you very much, Philip, Joshua. Okay, Joshua, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Oren, for the great presentation. Um, I was just wondering uh, how much you can tell us about how your traction with uh, the likes of the SMBC Trust and the Karaoke uh, Association and what have you have translated into sales or revenue at this point? Uh, where, what, yeah, what, can you disclose anything on that front? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say that the Karaoke Association collaboration started on a very nice story, which uh, we started in Kyushu Island. 11 women have been there, and there was one woman who had corona. So after she found out that she has corona, and none of the women over there got, uh, didn't get infected. And because uh, this uh, manner, basically everyone, uh, it was like a sort of a story from 
ear to mouth. And then we started to collaborate with the karaoke association. SMBC Trust Bank had an active project of $30 million with us. They invested $30 million in this uh, project. And I didn't discuss about it because it's uh, pretty new over there, but we started to collaborate in Kyushu Island in Oita Prefecture. And over there, we opened an A, B town and A and B hotel, which was in the TV and the news as well. Uh, we just installed 200 devices inside the hotel and started to uh, implement devices all over the neighborhood in Udon uh, restaurants, laundry places, and so on. Okay, I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut in. Our three minutes are up. Thank you very much, Oren. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and move on to our last presenter for the day. Our final presenter is Zeta Networks from the UK. Uh, they provide software products to simplify and automate uh, network operations for better monitoring, control, and management of enterprise networks. So, let's go. Hi, I'm Vasily Seferidis. CEO and co-founder of Zeta Networks, a software company that offers products that simplify and automate network operations. Zeta is a spin-out from the University of Bristol, one of the top universities in the UK, and we are commercializing a unique technology that is protected by patents. In the past five years, we have received $5 million funding, and we have grown to the 30 people based in Bristol. Last year, we reported $2 million revenues, and we received many awards for our products and technology, including the Gardner Cool Venture Award in 2019. The business problem we are solving is that the networks are often a bottleneck of any digital transformation project. This is because three of the most important technologies of any digital transformation project, namely cloud, mobility, and Internet of Things, are all network centric. So the performance of the network has direct impact to business performance and productivity. Zeta offers three products that provide a better way to monitor, control, and manage the networks. We call these products visualize, optimize, and automate. They are all simplify and automate network operations. Visualize provides a single pane of glass of all network domains, regardless of vendor or technology. This means that you can view, for example, Wi-Fi and private 5G mobile networks on the same dashboard. Optimize offers an easy way to define and manage connectivity services across the network by simply defining the endpoints and the parameters of the service in terms of bandwidth, latency, or anything else that's important for you. Automate enables the easy deployment of a group of services on demand, so you can, automa you can automate complex operations and reduce human errors. Our products can be used in many applications, from smart venues and stadia and smart cities to private 5G networks. In the last three years, we have been involved with many deployments in all these areas. And those are some examples of the projects that we have been involved with. Today, we are engaged with other projects with several other key industry players. Those are just some examples of these uh, projects. We expect their, our revenues to double this year based on these and other projects. Our team has grown rapidly in the last two years to over 30 employees today. Our leadership team consists of seasoned executives with strong commercial experience in both large corporates and startups with successful exits. We are supported by an advisory board of leading experts in these areas from both academia and industry. So far, we have received $5 million funding from three investors, which was used to develop our first commercial products and deployments in projects across the UK and Europe. We are now raising another $6 million in Series A round to scale up our sales and marketing efforts, accelerate and delivery of the product roadmap, and expand our IT portfolio. With the 
with our participation to the Hack Osaka, we are looking for three things. First, a channel partners of opportunities who can help us introduce our products to the Japanese market. Second, potential investors who may be interested in participating in our next round of funding later this year. And third, any other business development opportunities, especially in the area of private 5G networks. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce our company, our technology, and our products to such an exciting event. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity, and we look forward to staying in touch. Okay, it's time for our Q&A. Who wants to jump in first? Okay, Joshua. Thank you uh, very much for the presentation um, and uh, congratulations on your traction so far. Um, you already have uh, some good uh, early investment and uh, revenue traction. Um, and you mentioned uh, among the integrators that you're working with um, Fujitsu, I'm not sure if that's in Japan or, or elsewhere, but I, I'm just wondering in, in the scheme of your overall strategy now, um, where does Japan fit in terms of priority uh, as, 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 a, as a market and why? Yeah, sure. Thank you for the question there. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, yes, I mean, we have um, a good uh, commercial traction so far. We have uh, obviously moved uh, away from, um, you know, from the first um, commercial deployments of our product, and we're looking to internationalize now our business development and um, activities. Our two main targets for uh, the next couple of years will be the North America and uh, Japan, just because we believe that those are the two markets which are mature enough to actually accept our product and um, obviously, you know, take the full benefit out of, um, out of the product. Thank you. Okay, still got a little bit of time. Okay, Alan, please. Yeah, um, obviously network management or performance management is a very big category with a lot of complicated problems to solve. And the thing that I found interesting in your presentation is the request to look for 5G, private 5G network management opportunities in Japan. And I'm curious if, you're, if that's a Japan specific focus or if it's the whole focus of the company in how you build your product competence and customer base globally. Are, are you specialized in private 5G? or likely to be? Yeah, I mean, the, the reason we're focusing on the private 5G networks is because we have some um, existing deployments, so we have uh, experience in actually doing that. It is, of course, a booming market, especially in the United States with CBRS and um, other types of uh, private networks. And we expect that this is going to be the next tsunami of um, activity and um, development of bringing basically the public uh, mobile network to a wider audience and wider stuff market with industrial players like, you know, big uh, automobile industry, for example, players developing their own stuff, um, uh, private networks, just because they want to control better the network and keep the, you know, the security and the data within their premises. Thanks. All right, thank you very much.